Alright guys, welcome back to Valorant News. Massive roster updates emerging overnight with evil geniuses supposedly making a change in their new team. At least four of the five players may well have been spotted in practice yesterday. Also rumours that Sentinels are still playing with Zelsis, no Pancada in the team. This is apparently because Pancada is still unwell, but Tens has also returned from illness. So what's going on at Sentinels? What's going on at evil geniuses? Massively on Twitter your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always, I would greatly appreciate it. Now, there was some crazy stuff happening yesterday, starting here with Crew Esports. Now, we've known for a long time, Sergio Aguero has been, you know, co-owner of the Crew Esports organization, has been involved for a long time. Maybe we might well have expected that as an Argentinian football player, he might well try and get one of his boys involved as well. And that turns out to be none other yesterday than Mr. Lionel Messi. As they do a video confirming you that, as we can see, got, you know, 20 million views on Twitter, 161,000 likes on it. And, uh, you know, Aguero makes the announcement here with the Cree Sports brand. Of course, it's not just Valorant they do, they do other things as well. And they made that miracle run last year, of course, at the last chance qualifier. And Aguero confirms that Messi is gonna, I mean, this is so wild really to think about, especially because Messi, it's always been a meme, right, with Sentinels. They've always been joking for some time that, oh yeah, they're going to get Messi in as their, um, you know, their top guy. They're going to get him in as their co-owner or whatever. And it turns out that actually that's exactly what happens. That, um, yeah, so obviously Sergio Aguero and Leo Messi, both co-owners now of Carice Sports. So wild stuff. And um, hopefully it'll prove to be a good investment for Messi over time. But you can just see the interaction this gets just immediately. It's absolutely mega. And, you know, Aguero has been on the watch parties. The idea there's going to be like Messi on like a Valorant watch party is kind of wild to me and um yeah there you go the, the big announcement yesterday no doubt about it one of the biggest announcements possible frankly in esports and sentinels understandably were like well i've got a second here how are we going to bounce back from this one you know like you know this is better be our guy they've made screenshots like this and messi on the sentinels jersey and uh, well yeah no longer going to be the case unfortunately and as tarek says i've got a second like you know how is Sen going to bounce back we need to get ronaldo asap or lebron so maybe rob Moore needs to think about making some connections there and you know of course they would pay in and actually, because Sentinels, their financial difficulties have been quite clear over the last several months. That's been a big rumour and talking point that financially Sentinels aren't stable for that much longer. They've got a new injection of cash that will take them up until mid next season. And sure, that might be enough to keep them going. But, you know, maybe Cristiano Ronaldo comes in, maybe LeBron comes in, puts some money into the team, it takes a significant equity share. And that's usually how these things are done. So maybe it's going to be said at LeBron or said at CR seven but rather unlikely now quickly before we get into the roster drama I wanted to mention what's happening with 100 thieves because Tarek also had a comment on this I believe it was nature on stream reveals that they only practiced for nine or ten days going into the rebel home grounds which is you know it's understandable given the fact that nature was not necessarily their intended guy and they wanted boostio I'm guessing and that's probably still going to be the case as we'll see here over the coming minutes but the fact that they only played for barely over a week before a massive tournament is well, as Tarek says, it's just classic NA excuses, is it not? Is there a good reason why 100 Thieves had this little practice? Or given the fact that they should have known for a long time now, Bustio is not gettable until January, they should have got it sorted sooner, they should have had more practice, and they should have been better prepared. How many regions you guys have? We had nine, ten days of practice, or nine days of practice? <laughs> classic NA excuse. Bro's never, bro, 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 bro's never show up to an event where practice, like, bro, who the f like, uh, come on, people. We, we've been f the The season ended f eight years ago, guys. Put your roster together a little faster, no? Why are we showing up to events with nine days of practice? Like, I mean, yeah, I hope there's a good excuse, but like, I mean, I guess the good thing about showing up to an event with little practice, if you lose, huh, we had no practice. If you win, huh, we're the f best. So I think it's difficult to blame nature for this situation, but it's like, how have 100T allowed this to happen? Now, like, it's a pre-season tournament, and maybe even after 10 days of practice, if your team is good, you're going to be able to see that. But at the same time, if you're significantly under practice compared to some of the other teams in attendance, it makes it way more difficult to win. And therefore, you're not going to be able to see potentially the full potential. Although apparently their scrims were going very well before the Rebel Home Grounds and they didn't perform great. They were okay in the end. I mean, okay, they beat Scars. They did lose their first game. They then went on to play DRX and they lost a pretty tight series of DRX with some miracle plays 
from Buzz, but DRX then went on to get demolished the next game that they played. So um, it wasn't massively impressive, 100 Thieves. And is Tarek right that again, this excuses trick from LA players is coming back to bite them? Maybe it's going to work better for 100 T because last year they won the home grounds and they were terrible, really, compared to expectations for the majority of the season. Maybe this year can be the other way around, although it is relatively unlikely that's going to be the case. Now, let's talk about roster changes because there's been lots of theories as to what Sentinels are thinking. Would you be surprised if after the recent results, they were heavily considering getting Zelsis into the team full time? No, but I would be definitely surprised if they actually made the change. I think that it would be premature to do so. Obviously, we saw that FNS said the other day that he is in agreement that keeping Pancada instead of Zelsis is just the right decision to make at the moment, given Pancada's legacy and his tenure on that particular role. Zelsis, though, did a stellar job, and no doubt he's won everything he's played so far for this Sentinels roster. And as James Webb says, according to practice scrims over the last couple of days, Zelsis is still in their practice. Now, James Webb can see, you know, has sources that will get him access to see all of the custom games that are being played, so we can just see who's playing with who. And it's been quite clear that indeed, yep, yeah, this is still the case. The explanation, though, is somewhat unclear. Rumor has it that 10 is back in the team, which is interesting because Pancada was unwell. Now, I don't know how unwell Pancada is, but, you know, this is definitely an interesting question right now because Pancada was unwell, stepped down for Celsius. Celsius comes in, does a great job, no doubt. Tens then, very recently, is unwell. Pancada comes back in for Tens and Celsius goes into Tens' role. Pancada plays the smoke, so it was on the Omen that series, dominated the series. But now Tens is back. So, uh, you know, Tens is back from illness, good to see, but... Pancada's back here again. I, I don't really, I don't know. It, it's not like it doesn't add up, but it's just confusing if this is the case that Pancada went from being unwell to fine again and now, now he's unwell again, but Tens is fine. And all things considered, this is apparently what James has heard that Pancada is still sick according to new information and Zelsis is still filling in. But, you know, when you're filling in for like two weeks, when does a fill-in become you're the full-time player, you know what I mean? So yeah, the rumor is that the roster is set to stay the same and Pancada, when he's fine again, will return. But it's just, I don't know, there's a lot of interesting pieces here that don't fully add up. This might be perfectly reasonable and over time we might find out that this is true, but I just find it confusing that Zelsis is just filling in still and has been for the last like couple of weeks. Now the other part of this absolutely is the Evil Geniuses side of the story because they confirmed yesterday that their CSGO team is going to be gone. Their CS teams are out of there and you know the likes of automatic players like this are going to be gone from their Evil Geniuses CS lineup. They run out of money, you know, it's how it is. Lots of esports organizations, lots of legal fees right now with EG, right? Because they are doing a lot of work right now behind the scenes to, well, try and not have to pay out players for plenty of misdemeanors they may have made over the last several years. But this ties into their Valorant team, especially when we see this screenshot emerge yesterday. So we've got the Sentinels team, firstly, worthy of note. Also kind of cool to see Brax here, back playing again with Pancakes and Co. But we can see John QT, Kaplan, of course, is the, uh, the coach of the roster, Sassy, Tenz is here, Zelsis is here, so pretty clear that's what's going on there. We've got Tarek and Bustio teaming up. But we've also got on the right-hand side, this is especially interesting, and again, we can see John QT, Zekin, Zelsis, Kaplan, all in that game with Sentinels, playing against G2 as well. But look at this EG thing, Com Jorgamo. Now, this is interesting because it's 7262. I don't know, maybe this was screenshotted just on one of the ticks, so maybe it hadn't fully updated for Jorgamo yet, but they are in the same game here, so I'm guessing it's just like, um, you know, a small little glitch on the timing. But Com Jorgamo, Stella and Corey all on the same team at the same time which is well there's a lot to be said about this is it possible that they are playing that they're subbing in common Jorgamo for Stella and Corey's team and it's not actually EG but they're playing for Stella and Corey's team possibly James have said Possibly, but very unlikely, right? The likelihood is that this is Stella and Corey joining to play with EG on some sort of trial basis, which makes a lot of sense. Stella, of course, formerly 100 Thieves, in-game leader, he was one of the options that we thought might even go to NRG if they were to be forced into getting Stella, a player like Stella, which not exactly the you know top of the list maybe but a player that you can certainly get and potentially rely on but if Stella's joining as an in-game leader to EG or at least trialing that's got to make you think that Bustio is no longer there potentially going to 100 Thieves that seems likely 
And then if Corey's joining, if Corey's really versatile, can play anything. But, you know, feels to me that's going to replace what Ethan or Demon One potentially are trying to bring to the party over there. Because, of course, both of those players also very versatile. That's EG's whole thing. So this says to me that Bustio's probably gone and at least one of Ethan and, and Demon One are gone as well. Because otherwise, why would they be holding trials to this extent? Especially when Automatic then, who of course is gone now from the Evil Geniuses CSGO team or CS2 team, says, what's it looking like in Valorant? And Ethan goes, heard EG are probably looking and Jorgamo doesn't want to comment. So, you know, this definitely sounds like Ethan's like, well, yeah, we're making changes. EG are not going to be the same roster next season, despite the contract jail, despite trying to hold them down and all this stuff, doesn't seem to have worked. And yeah, Ethan out of EG is now looking more likely than ever. Now, if Ethan does leave, if he is allowed to go, if he does get out of there and right, and his contract is bought out, as we imagined that it would have been if he is leaving, is he the only man to be gone? Is Demon One gone as well? Have NRG actually pulled off the successful heist and got Ethan and Demon One out of EG? That would be the ideal scenario. Probably in that case, Ethan or Marved does the IGLing alongside Victor and Crashies. That team would be really nice. And that's the team that if they really want to compete this season, that's what they've got to do, I would say. Get, try and get Ethan and Demon 1. If they've achieved that, which was initially their target, that's a great job. It's also interesting that they have shortened the contract recently, NRG this is, of both Victor and Crashies. They're only now signed for one more year rather than two more years, which did indicate that after this season, they might look to make potentially a serious roster change as in you know a full rebuild but that might no longer be necessary if they get the moves that they have wanted to get done all along which is for Ethan and Demon 1 and now we're seeing EG scrim with other players which implies that yeah maybe because EG need the money they've agreed to some of these sale prices and certainly Ethan implies that is the case so lots of questions around roster media at the moment massively intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below what's next for these respective teams do you buy this whole um yeah EG are making changes thing after all and just to close out with I thought was pretty interesting the top KD for every agent on certain players and um, yeah, as a safe says right here, looking pretty good on for Team Liquid on the Jets. Putting up a 1.38 KD here, that's kind of the way this is aligned. We've got Som on the Harbour, we've got, you know, other players like Alpha on the Kildare, stuff like this. Of course, Aspas is going to make a mention as well. And yeah, Jing, unfortunately, played a great season and even on the Phoenix had a very good performances because that's what PRX like to do. But um, unfortunately, we'll not be playing in the upcoming season. But very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time.